Having run roughshod over the San Francisco 49ers by a 46-point margin the week before, the New York Giants entered the NFC Championship game full of confidence, along with a healthy dose of fire and brimstone. As it turned out, the elements would be an ally as well, as heady winds gusting up to 25 miles per hour would send a swirling sting into the faces of the opposing Washington Redskins. New York won the toss and elected to kick off with the wind at their backs. A wise decision for the Giants and a disaster for the Redskins. While Washington punts fluttered and fell, the New York offense was on a steady course, thanks to strong running from halfback Joe Morris. Little Joe's run set up the first score of the game, a 47-yard wind-aided field goal from Giants kicker Raul Alegre. While the chilling gusts continued to hamper the Redskins' attack, the Giants had no such problems, extending their lead on the next drive, thanks to a pair of clutch catches from the recently activated Lionel Manuel, number 86. After a 10-week injury absence, Manuel was back in the flow of the New York offense. Lionel worked his way back to passer Phil Sims, who stepped up and away from the rush. With time to throw and Manuel open, the touchdown was there for the take. But no such prospects loomed for the Redskins, who found that the giant defense was virtually impossible to run against. The Redskins also hurt themselves by failing to hold on to the football, a malady that would afflict them all game. Washington's best scoring chance came in the second period when quarterback Jay Schrader got out of trouble by hitting number 81 Art Monk for the Redskins' longest gain of the day. But even this was botched when a field goal attempt was ruined by another self-inflicted wound. Seeming to draw strength from Washington's failures, Sims began another stylish drive that opened with a hookup to tight end Mark Bavaro, number 89. Inside the Redskin 10, Sims took matters into his own hands and feet and very nearly cashed in. The giant quarterback is obviously no speed merchant, a clever faking almost produced a touchdown. While the offensive line in the backs faked a play to the right, Sims rolled left, away from Redskin pursuit, putting the ball just inches from a score. Joe Morris got the touchdown on the very next play, thanks to subtle but effective giant blocking. Guard Chris Godfrey, number 61, got in the way of Washington force man Alvin Walton. It was hardly a bone-jarring collision, but it allowed Morris to score untouched. Morris gave New York a 17 to nothing lead, then gave the Redskins one last scoring chance just before halftime when he fumbled deep in his own territory. But the Giants' defense was the immovable object, holding Washington on four straight plays. When running back George Rogers tried to convert on a fourth and one, he was stopped dead in his tracks. An ill wind and an ill-mannered Giant defense had thwarted the Redskins in the first half along with Washington's own ineptitude. Unfortunately for the men of D.C., that same combination would continue to plague them in the second half as well. Although the Giants' defense continued their mastery of the Redskins in the second half, Washington managed to control the master of defense, Lawrence Taylor, number 56.
But the Redskins concentrated so heavily on Taylor that when he sat out most of the final 30 minutes, Washington became vulnerable to the rest of the storming Giants. Eric Dorsey, number 77, buried Jay Schrader for one sack. And Leonard Marshall, number 70, had another. Schrader became so unnerved that many times his passes were well off the mark. And when a receiver was in the neighborhood, he seemed afflicted with a terminal case of the drops. Schrader, forced to play catch-up against the best rushing defense in the league, threw on every play but one in the second half, and finished the day with a dismal 20 completions in 50 attempts. Regardless of whose fault it was, the pain of the Redskins' third and most important loss of the season to division rival New York will linger for months. But the Giants fans, starved for a conference champion for 23 years, called for the now expected ceremonial dunking of Bill Parcells, who put on more moves than either offense could muster to avoid this shower. With their 17-0 victory, the Giants became the third straight team to win the NFC Championship in a shutout. And the ultimate post-game accolade proved just how crucial their dominating defense has been all year. As defensive coordinator Bill Belichick savored a champion's ride off the field. The Giants faithful send their team to their first Super Bowl as heavy favorites against Denver. Under a shower of confetti. They're just warming up for an anticipated victory celebration. <laughs>